Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 10, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have a very active sky, and it's not so much that there are a lot of celestial connections taking place, but what is happening is big. And really the big news this week happens right around Valentine's Day, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. Energy that we are feeling right out of the gate is the, what I'm calling the divine meeting of Mars and Uranus. Now these two planets get together about once every two years in the sky. And when they do, it always represents some epiphany, some realization, some revelation that changes our energy around one particular area of life. Sometimes this can bring with it surprises. Sometimes it can bring with it delight, sometimes shock. And it is this very area of life that gets a whole other perspective and a sense that things have changed very quickly. But very often it's us. It's us that sees that area of life differently than we did before that lends itself to the most powerful change. Now, the meeting of Mars and Uranus this time is special for a few reasons. One is that they are meeting at the very end of the sign of Aries. In fact, it's going to be uh, shortly thereafter that Mars will change signs. So this really is with Uranus at the very end of the sign of Aries, really a culmination point, a wrapping up of a larger cycle that's been nine years in the making. It has been since 2010 that Uranus has spent most of the time in this part of the sky. And as Uranus gears up to finally leave the sign of Aries for good next month, it's almost as if here comes Mars to say, did you get the lesson? Do you understand how it is that I was trying to free you or help you to evolve or help you to take a more mature approach in this particular area of life? Now, the thing to remember is that Uranus's maturity is not like Saturn's maturity, not at all. When we say the word and think of the word maturity, we often think of the archetype of Saturn because it has to do with responsibility and obligation and understanding the bigger picture, taking a measured approach. These are very Saturnian keywords. And when we see a meeting in the sky of Saturn and another power player, it's like that energy that can also be understood as rather heavy is what visits us. However, with Uranus, it's a different type of maturity. It's about equality. It is about understanding that your freedom is your responsibility and honoring your own authentic expression and honoring your truth. And as such, this planet can be highly individual, but it can also be one that is strongly associated with the collective, associated with all of us and collective movements as well. And it is a planet that represents very quick change. And when it meets Mars, some of that change may look very erratic or impulsive to the people around us. However, chances are that this is a change that's been a while coming. And if you find yourself particularly restless and just ready, ready for things to change, no matter how dramatic it may seem, well, this is telling you that it has been a while coming, maybe you hadn't really paid attention as much, but now it becomes very hard not to pay attention when Mars meets Uranus in the sky. Now for us as a collective, um, it is the sign of Aries, wherever Uranus goes, it represents a, a, our collective movements and what we understand about the groups that we align with. And it also speaks to how it is that we go about seeking a more just, more equal world and how we understand what that is. And so in the sign of Aries, we saw a lot of very uh, passionate demonstrations. We saw people who said, I feel it and therefore it is true and therefore I am it. Well, now we should see in one way of looking at this sky is that we may very well see this week some uh, very notable uh, stance that a group of people take as part of asserting their individuality that can happen with this. 
Um, it is going to be really one of the last big things that Uranus is going to do before he changes signs. However, because this is happening at the very end of the sign of Aries, chances are there will be some very noteworthy occurrences that do take place, some very strong statements that are made at this time. I want to come back to this affirmation of authenticity that Uranus represents. It is Jeff Green who uh, articulated Uranus as the call to be more of whom it is that you were created to be and not whom it was that you were conditioned to be. And as such, Uranus is also understood as inner authority and honoring our own inner voice. And as part of this, there will be times when that doesn't make a lot of sense to the people around us, might not even make a lot of sense to us as well. But here's a really good measure. Is it rooted in love? Is it rooted in wisdom? Because if you are coming from that place of love and wisdom, of self-honor and of honoring that higher authority, that inner voice within you that is uh, guided, well, that's when you're using this energy well, because it becomes more balanced. It is Uranus that also represents uh, mind and thought and brilliance as well. And so there is a certain detachment, a certain rationality to this energy. And it is also that more rational approach that then allows us to ensure that, yes, what it is and whom it is that we are most desiring to be, uh, what truth it is that we are most desiring to express, our rational minds can see whether or not it is rooted in love and wisdom. And if it is rooted in love and wisdom, well, that is when we are honoring the more divine expression of this energy. There are times in a life when it just becomes too much to continue to wear a mask. The cost is too great. Uh, the burden is too heavy. And that mask can be worn in different ways. I mean, think about our own lives. We are a certain way with certain people than we may be with others. And it's not uncommon for some people to say, like, I can really be myself around that person or around that group of people. Uh, I can really be around people who are, for example, fellow astrologers, right? This is something that I do hear quite a bit when I go to astrology conferences. However, it is uh, a moment that all of us will reach where, this idea of what it means to be ourselves is contrast with those moments and those spaces in which we feel we cannot be ourselves. And that is where Uranus meeting Mars says to us, no, some integration needs to happen. And so either we're going to recognize that, you know, actually, and what I think is that both are an expression of ourselves. Sometimes it is that we are so varied that we have so many interests or so many needs or so many wants or so many desires that we can be one way with a group of people and a whole other way with another. But it's still an authentic expression. It's still an honest part of us that's coming forward. But then there are moments when it doesn't feel that way. It feels like we are being a false self with certain people. And it feels as if we are no longer willing to participate in that drama or that character anymore. Well, that's Mars meeting Uranus. It is that breakthrough moment. It is that clarity moment to understand what your mask may be and with whom and where it is that it works for you, but where it is that it really is not working for you anymore. And as a result, as I said, lots of impulsive actions uh, may be taking place. We may see people around us making decisions that don't make a whole lot of sense, but know that even if it doesn't make sense on the surface, there is something honest about what people are doing now, something truthful for them about what it is that they are expressing now. And that is a truth that they might have been holding back for way too long. It's just now that its expression is undeniable. Now, for those of you born right around the 19th to the 25th of any given month, you're going to feel this energy of Mars and Uranus more than most. But all signs out there of any given birth date over the course of a month are going to feel this energy. All of us in at least one area of life, as I said, we are about to feel a sense of change and a sense of liberation. It may delight us and propel us into our future, or it may shock us in a way that takes a moment 
of getting used to. However, both roads lead to the same direction, which is an authentic expression of yourself. Now, as I said, on the same day, Mars is going to change signs, move into Earth sign Taurus. This is going to change our focus considerably in a few ways. So one way is it is Mars moving into this part of the sky that's going to start to give us a little bit of a preview of what's coming up ahead. Uh, Mars will slowly and diligently move here for the better part of the next two months, just under two months. And while Mars is moving through this part of the sky is essentially walking a path that Uranus is going to take the next seven years to walk as he moves through the sign of Taurus as well. And this is going to allow us to get a sense of which way the energy may be heading and get a feel for where it is that life and our own spirit, our own soul is asking us to be more honest with ourselves, asking us to get in touch with a voice of self-knowledge, get in touch with some root of truth about who we are within us and to act from that place. That really is the higher spiritual understanding of Mars. When you think about the glyph of Mars, it is a circle with an arrow arising from it. That circle is completion. That circle is wholeness. That circle represents you contained as yourself and in touch with your own divinity. And the arrow, of course, is arising from that circle, is acting outwardly, taking steps, moving forward from that place of self-knowledge, from that place of connection to your own sacred power to move your life in any direction that you choose. Now, as part of this, I always like to say, and I think that Mars very strongly represents uh, where it is that we are asked to practice the serenity prayer, which is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. All three of those are positions of power, and they are positions of authentic power, certainly, but it does take a certain strategic will in order to be able to recognize which form of power is being called for in a given moment and to bring it forward, uh, to focus on it, to summon it in the instant that it is needed. As Mars moves through this part of the sky, he will, in the weeks ahead, be making harmonious connections with other power players. I'm thinking of you, Saturn. I'm thinking of you, Pluto. Um, and as Mars reaches out to Neptune as well, well, what this says is that that Mars energy in the sign of Taurus is strengthened. Uh, its resolve is fortified. and the exercise of our will, the action we take, can be powerfully rewarded. This is really knocking the ball out of the park in very notable ways. And so do pay attention to where it is that you very suddenly may find yourself very focused on a particular area of life. So if it is that all of a sudden you're feeling very motivated uh, to experience change, to make something happen, uh, to make progress, in one area of life where you're summoning your own sense of determination and you are cultivating uh, perseverance, well, that tells you something about where it is that you are being asked not only to practice the serenity prayer, but also where it is uh, that most of your energy is going to go in the period ahead and in the coming weeks ahead with Mars moving through here. But at the same time, remember to take that larger perspective because this is the path, as I said, that Uranus is gonna walk very soon. And the expression of Uranus in your chart, in your life, while yes, you will share that with people in a sense who share uh, your moon sign, who share your sun sign, who share your rising sign. However, this can also be very unique to you. The way that you are going to cultivate a relationship with Uranus, the way that you are going to bring forward uh, the energy over the better part of the next seven years of Uranus is going to be uniquely your own. And so what could that be for you? What is that gonna look like for you? How are you going to be changed in some way? What opportunities might surprise you in the coming seven years? It is Mars now that's gonna provide you with a little bit of glimpse of what could be, knowing that it truly is just a glimpse for how great things are coming up ahead.
I do want to remind you that there are Uranus special horoscopes. Uh, you can see that on my YouTube channel as well. You can see that on my website as well, NadiaShaw.com. Finally, Mercury at the very beginning of the week will change signs, move into the sign of Pisces for a nice long stay. So when is it that Mercury spends a nice long time in one area of the sky? Mercury retrograde season. Yes, it is right around the corner. We had to get here. I know it's been a lot of fun and very exciting uh, for a lot of people out there, myself included, to have all planets going direct and to feel that sense of momentum, which is a beautiful thing. However, it is going to be next week. So we're not there yet, but next week when Mercury will enter shadow and it will be in March that Mercury goes retrograde. So the official retrograde season is going to be in March. However, the steps that Mercury will walk on that will be backed over and then walked on for a third and final time once Mercury goes direct in late March, well, that path starts to light up next week. What that means for us right now is that there is a clear sky ahead, uh, at least for this week, and at least as we start this week for a good 10 days. And so where it is that you need to take important action, have an important conversation, launch something new, it would probably be a good idea to try and do that. Now, of course, we have to trust the karmic path before us, right? If something feels like it just needs more time, well, that's what it needs. However, this is gonna be the opportunity to start to tap into a sense of connection, a sense of communication, a sense of understanding in at least one new area of life in a way that is unhindered and in a way that won't have to be repeated in the future if you take action this week. Now, Mercury moving into the sign of Pisces is going to have us collectively talking about a few interesting things. This is a part of the sky that has to do with hospitals and prisons and anywhere where people are isolated. It has to do with addiction as well and how it is that genuine healing can occur. Uh, spiritual healing is covered here also and what steps we can take. So there'll be more conversation as a collective on that front. But this is a part of the sky that also has to do with what is hidden, what could be secret. And so I do think as I look at this that there is that possibility there where uh, we are going to find ourselves talking about, wondering about, having more discussions and maybe even see this reflected in the media as to what is it that we don't know. Now one higher way to understand this energy is that it has to do with being plugged into source and it has to do with our connection to everyone and everything and where it is that that relationship that we have with source is often easy to feel or easier to feel than it is to articulate. It is Mercury now that's gonna allow us to find the words to say what has not been said by us yet or not been intellectually understood by us yet. I happen to think that it is through the intellect, it is through mind that we can begin to transform what otherwise would just stay a feeling. A feeling in and of itself uh, has a way of washing over us. It can come, it can go, but it is through intellect that we learn from it and that we transform it into something more useful to us. And thereby we can start to move in a direction where we change our emotional reactions to each other, certainly, but to the circumstances of our life. And it is also intellect that allows us to take what we feel and find wisdom in it, a wisdom that can help others, that can be of service to others. Now, where is it that you are ready to take what has so far just been a feeling, hanging out in the realm of emotion and actually express it in words? It is Mercury that's gonna help you to do that now. But remember, this is going to be a journey that we are going to be on in our own individual lives, but as a collective as well. And this journey is going to be there for us for the next two months. 
What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's so much here, but I do love that meeting of Mars and Uranus. I know that it's unpredictable and the unpredictable factor can be scary, but this is where trust comes in. This is where the wisdom of Mercury moving into the sign of Pisces comes in. We will find ways to take whatever transpires and articulate what we maybe have not up until now. To articulate those things that have been hidden, whether hidden from us, uh, to articulate those things that are rather ephemeral, that don't suit words well. And it is in this sense of a, a sudden revolution, a sudden rebellion within us that we actually touch on truth. We touch on some spirit of honesty within us that has the sincere desire to truly be ourselves and to know that it is enough. You are worthy of shining, of being seen, of living in a way that honors who you are as you are today. And where it is that you've sort of bought into an illusion or bought into a lie, you are about to transform that illusion. See it for what it is, articulate it for what it is, and instead understand that there is a deeper knowing within you. And that knowing is the pathway towards what it means to be an honest expression of you. And the interesting thing is, is that when you prioritize that voice of authenticity, you also move towards greater inner peace. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for it. Uh, comment below, what are you excited about this week? What do you love about this week? I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you, in your sign, log on to nadiashaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, and so much more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And I thank you so much for your patience. I send each and every one of you out there in the digital world a big hug. Thank you for your patience with the monthly horoscopes. It was an unusual month. It was an unusual time. It got pretty hectic there for a moment, uh, but I'm really glad that I was able to complete them. And I'm so very grateful that they were received as well as they have been. So the February monthly horoscopes are now on YouTube. So please do have a look at that. I have some very exciting announcements. I have a brand new partnership that I am thrilled to announce with KA Gold Jewelers. They are a force where it comes to sacred jewelry and talismans. Uh, some of their work is personalized. Some of their work is actually really easy to access. If you have a look at their website using the link below, it will take you to their page where you can see all the different spiritual expressions of what it is that they create with their sacred jewelry. I'm really very grateful to have partnered with them. I know that I've been a fan of theirs for many, many years. I've been sharing this uh, in the last few days on Instagram, and it looks like a lot of you out there are fans of them as well. So they are very well-respected, well-renowned. They've been around for a really long time. And so it's very exciting to be able to share their incredible work with you. So please do uh, click on the link in the description below. Now I do have a bunch of amazing classes to announce in the immediacy. This week I will be speaking this Wednesday uh, with Night Light Astrology School Online. Now I'll be speaking on the moon and so we'll be talking about the moon in astrology, how important it is. Uh, and I am a big believer that honoring your moon is one of the surest ways to ensure that you feel a sense of inner peace and inner equilibrium. And so I think the moon is incredibly important. In some systems of astrology, it is more important than even the sun sign or the rising sign for that matter. And so it is an important symbol to dive into. Uh, registration is entirely by donation. So if it is that you can uh, pay something, that's great. There's a donation link when you sign up. Uh, and if it is that you can't, that's okay. The access link is there. And so you are free to be able to, uh, to come into the space and and learn about the moon with all of us. On my travels recently, having the privilege of teaching in person to so many incredible souls uh, and interacting with them, 
I came to understand more clearly that the celestial events that are coming up in 2019 and 2020, a lot of us are feeling it already. And a big theme that I am seeing here is navigating what otherwise can be very challenging. And as part of this, I really am motivated to launch a new initiatives and new endeavors that are a part of affirming love, joy and hope, and of course, love and wisdom in the world. But I think that this is a time uh, that we are now at the very beginning of where so much is changing. And in our own journeys as well, uh, we are looking more deeply within us with the sincere desire for a rebirth so that we learn from what has been challenging and instead uh, carry hope in our hearts and move forward and grow forward with authentic joy and authentic love. And so as part of helping each of us in our individual journeys, but yes, even humanity as a whole, I am going to be launching all kinds of new things uh, in the months ahead uh, that are part of affirming this sense of healing and love and joy and love and wisdom. And so as part of this intention, uh, I have created a new special series of Synchronicity University. Now this is a special series that will take place in the month of March. It will feature four classes and each class is oriented around uh, this idea of moving through what would otherwise be challenging and utilizing it so that it in some way helps you to move into greater love and greater wisdom. Now this can be tremendously helpful uh, to those of us who are on a spiritual journey and understanding our own charts more deeply. And if you are a student of astrology or new uh, to astrology, I do think that it is often, and what happens is a challenging time is part of what leads us to the astrology chart. And so this can be a series of classes that helps you to understand where you've been or where you may be right now. But also if it is that you read the charts of other people, whether it's your friends or your family or even clients, it is going to be this set of classes that is going to help you to understand, to identify when it is and where it is that people may be experiencing challenges in their life and how to guide them, how to navigate forward. And so this is uh, just the first of a few different things that I'm going to be doing. But for Synchronicity University in March, the online series, uh, this upcoming session, uh, classes are available right now. And you can go to synchronicityuniversity.com. There is an early bird special if you sign up within the next two weeks. Uh, and if you wait until after that, there's a little bit of a price increase. but. I do hope that whether it's one class or whether it's all the classes that you will uh, join us. So classes will take place Saturdays uh, afternoon EST as we have done in the past. Replays are available afterwards. Downloads are available afterwards if you can't join us live. Uh, whether you're there in person or not, uh, it is uh, hopefully going to be an opportunity to learn a whole lot. And so the very first uh, class, the first Saturday, uh, the class is on faith and fortitude. It's about cultivating your own unique relationship with your higher power as you understand it. The second Saturday, the class will be on uh, moments of change and looking at navigating uh, difficult cycles uh, in the astrology chart. The third class will be about transforming difficult relationships that you may have, understanding them as spiritual contracts and what it is that you're meant to learn and how to evolve the relationships that you are in. And then the fourth and final class will be looking more at transits uh, that focus on times uh, where we are moving through uh, chaos and crisis and ease us towards calm as articulated by Carl Jung. So these are going to be the focus of these classes. The need for these, the inspiration for these classes came up as a result of my interactions uh, at the live events I did uh, recently. And it is as a result of those live events that I realized that there is this need for these classes. So I hope that you will join us live. I hope that if there's somebody you know who could find one of these classes useful, you will consider connecting them uh, to synchronicityuniversity.com as well and sharing that space and sharing these upcoming classes. 
Now, in-person events are also going to begin to take on this focus as well. Now, there are some events like uh, in Vancouver and Seattle, live events are taking place in May, uh, Labor Day weekend, I'll be in Baltimore. Now, future live events that I will be announcing are also going to begin to take on this focus of understanding how to navigate times that can be challenging uh, in order to really help people to be empowered by astrology because I think that's one of the great gifts that astrology provides is that it gives us these clues, it gives us these insights into ourselves and the energy of the moment of what has been, of what is coming up so that we can navigate it with greater awareness and it is in the awareness that we choose greater love and greater wisdom. And so I'm thinking of all kinds of ways that I can affirm this in the world. Another one of the ways uh, is with a, a brand new event that I'm announcing uh, to you today. And this event is uh, going to be coming up in January of 2020 under the light of the Saturn Pluto conjunction. I am going to be a guest on a, a very transformational a once in a lifetime experience of a cruise event. And it was uh, recently my experience in Mexico uh, being a guest at Maurice Fernandez's event that I saw the power of people sort of being pulled out of their comfort zone, being in a brand new space, being near nature, and how much it is that that changes you, how much it is that that facilitates a moment that can truly change the trajectory of your life for a very, very long time to come, how it is that that facilitates true, meaningful healing. It was powerful to witness in the one day that I was teaching there. And so I'll be taking a little bit more of a regular role. It won't just be isolated to one day that my teaching is going to take place as part of a cruise event called Love, Hope and Joy. Uh, and this is going to be, again, a transformational experience where it comes to understanding spirituality, understanding these very strong uh, and defining celestial conversations that we are going through and how it is that it is meant to change us personally and collectively. So this is about taking you out of your regular life and putting you in the middle of the ocean, the very powerful ocean as part of this cruise and having astrology and spirituality lessons uh, during the day, uh, experiencing hands-on, on healing uh, and other spiritual lessons uh, throughout the day, observing the night sky uh, at night and all kinds of other things, excursions as well. Uh, this cruise will be very special with a lot of other very notable astrologers. I'm truly very privileged to be included among them. And uh, they include Adam Gainsburg, Samuel Reynolds, uh, Patricia Bell, uh, and many, many more. This is such a powerful event. I feel so grateful to be a part of it. And I hope that you will click on the link below and learn more about it and hopefully join us for a truly transformational experience. And keep an eye out because there'll be a lot more that I will be sharing in light of this realizations that I've had thanks to you as to how I can best use astrology to affirm love and wisdom in the world. Well, thank you. I want to thank you so much for this moment with you. Uh, thank you for your love, your extraordinary enthusiasm, your patience, of course, as I witnessed uh, the first week of this month already. I am so grateful for all of it. And I am so grateful to be some small part of your sacred journey. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.